Calm me, O Lord, as you stilled the storm. Still me, O Lord, keep me from harm. Let all the tumult within me cease. Enfold me, Lord, in your peace. Take this moment, sign and space. Take my friends away. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us call to mind and confess our sins. For everything we have done wrong in word, thought and deed, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For everything we should have said and done, but have failed to do, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Forgive and help us to truly follow Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to Glory to God, glory to God in the heart. 
Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. People who followed our online service last Sunday and who are also listening today we'll have heard seven parables of the kingdom which Jesus told. St Matthew was very careful not to take the name of God in vain, so when he wrote the kingdom of heaven, he did not mean the place where we go when we die. He was using a euphemism for the kingdom of God, which is whenever and wherever people obey God as their king. They are parables about growth. As you will have heard, the first is about people who tell their neighbours about Jesus, who are likened to a farmer sowing seeds. Though most show little long-term growth, it is worth it for the few who yield a rich harvest. The second parable is about wheat and weeds growing together in the fear that removing one risks destroying the other. God does not remove the weeds until the harvest. Thirdly, the first of today's parables is when Jesus reminds the people that the mustard seed is tiny, but it is destined to grow into a great tree, where the birds, representing the nations of the world, may roost. The next two parables are about hidden treasure and the pearl without price. The finder is willing to sell everything to exchange for the treasure, which holds so much future promise. Lastly, the kingdom is like a dragnet which scoops up all sorts of fish, leaving them to be sorted later. All these stories promise us that the Christian church is destined to grow and grow. So is this promise being fulfilled? Well, Jesus began with twelve disciples, plus others, including many women. On the day of Pentecost, three thousand new believers were baptised and soon the message had spread all over the Roman Empire. The next rapid expansion was in the 18th and 19th centuries, when the Gospel was taken to Asia and Africa. In 1910, Christians numbered approximately one-third of the world's population. Proportionately, it is the same now, but the population of the world has mushroomed, so the statistics hide the fact that the Christian Church is still growing at a fantastic rate. In Britain and Western Europe, the numbers of believers appear to be declining, but the figures are affected by other factors, 
such as social upheavals, wars, industrialization, and demographic shifts, leading to changing patterns of work and leisure. According to the last UK census, well over half the people claim to be Christians, even though a great many are not regular church attenders. The kingdom continues to grow, though sadly we have failed to make church an attractive way of growing in faith. Even so, alongside decline in some areas, substantial church growth has taken place in Britain in recent decades. In London, the largest Anglican diocese in the country, electoral rolls have grown by over 70% since 1990. Most cathedrals show growth in their congregations, and many multiracial churches enjoy what we might call reverse mission from the global south. There are now more than half a million worshipping in black majority churches in Britain, which are often ignored in official statistics. The promises of Jesus about the growth of seeds are being fulfilled. Why then is church growth less rapid in Western Europe than in the rest of the world? It could be that it is a matter of language. When Christian missionaries enter a new country, the first thing they do is to translate parts of the Bible into the language of the people. However, this involves not just replacing one word with another, but an attempt to understand the idioms, metaphors and philosophical concepts through which they communicate. We have dozens of different English translations available. You will have probably heard of one called The Message, which really is a modern version. The only difficulty is that chapter headings and verse numbers are often omitted, so it makes it difficult to find a specific passage. But in terms of reader understanding of the text, it is much easier even than the new revised standard version, the anglicised edition, that we tend to use in church today. Here's an example from the last two verses of today's Gospel reading. The version you heard earlier was this. Jesus said, Have you understood all of this? They answered yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The modern version says this. Jesus asked, Are you starting to get a handle on all of this? They answered yes. He said, Then you see how every student well trained in God's kingdom is like the owner of a general store who can put his hands on anything you need, old or new, exactly when you need it. I think that is much clearer. In 21st century Europe, much of our language is the language of science, yet Christians persist in talking and worshipping in words which were current hundreds of years ago and are completely unknown today. No wonder those who hear us are often baffled. Christians are called to re-evangelise the world afresh in every generation. If every Christian realises that this is what God is calling us to, and uses up-to-date terminology to do so, then the predictions of Jesus about mustard seeds growing into mighty trees could still be fulfilled in our own nation, in our time. Amen. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have planted in the heart of each one of us an instinct to pray, and we know that true prayer 
is simply holding communion with you in any way, any time and any place. Teach us to pray openly, trustfully, confidently, unselfishly remembering the needs of others as well as our own. In our communion with you we pray that we will hear you speaking to us and that in the quietness of your presence we will hear your still small voice and be able to reply Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to your love the daily work of each member of Christ's body, that in constant prayer we may learn your will and your ways of doing things until we work exclusively for your glory. May we all be more receptive to the Holy Spirit until every worshipping community is charged with the vitality and love of the living Christ. We bring before you all church leaders, bishops, all in ordained and lay ministry, and we give you thanks for all who serve in your ministry in Warplesdon Parish. May they be touched and strengthened by your caring love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our country. May our church rise to the challenges of change, to grow as a beacon of hope compassion and strength within this community. We pray also for the social community of which we are part, that you would make it a place where all can flourish equally, where the weak are cared for, and where there is harmony among people of all backgrounds and traditions. We ask your blessing on all those in positions of power, that they may lead with courage and wisdom, reflecting the values that the moral test of our society is how the weak, the poor and the vulnerable are faring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember the world's great needs and its many sorrows. We ask that you will bring the families of the nations struggling with disease, economic uncertainty, mistrust and conflict to your just and gentle rule. As life and death decisions are made for populations around the world, we pray that you will be there and your voice will be heard. In a time when our own normality is being redefined, we bless all those countries where war has long since been the new normal for so many, and where human tragedies cause so much despair. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for ourselves and our families, friends and neighbours. May we acknowledge our failings as well as our strengths and serve you in serving one another. We ask for your blessing on all those who have lost their way all who have lost their grip on reality, those deluding themselves or deluding others, we pray for the confused, the harassed and the dejected, the abandoned, the neglected and the abused. We bring before you those who are ill and in pain. Surround all who are suffering 
with your tenderness and give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in the arms of your love and give hope and patience to those recovering. In a moment of silence, we pray for those known to us who are suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, surround all who mourn this day with your continuing compassion. May their grief not turn them against you, and may they know that you are always beside them, sharing in their sorrow. We pray for the recently departed, that they may know the eternal joy of living in your presence forever. We also remember before God those dear to us who died some earthly time ago, that we may meet again in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the fresh joys and challenges of each new day, for the love and encouragement your Spirit gives us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Grace. 
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, Mother of our Lord, Alban and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, thy universe declares it, sun and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise him with hallelujahs, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, yet from his throne eternal, in flesh he came to die in pain on Calvary's tree. Jesus is Lord, from him all are proceeding, yet gave his life as ransom for setting. 
serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.